it seems even the energy market operator is casting doubt over the government's ambitious renewable goals. Perhaps it's time they go back to the drawing board. But first, to an issue that's jeopardising Chris Bowen's pie-in-the-sky green pipe dreams. As we've been reporting on this show now for months, landowners and communities right across the country are banding together to protest against the Bowen plan to carve up prime agricultural land with transmission towers. They're the size of the Harbour Bridge's pylons and they're needed to connect new, often foreign-owned and Chinese-made, wind and solar farms to the grid. Joining me to get the latest is Deputy Executive Director at the Institute of Public Affairs, Daniel Wild. Daniel, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Now, you're in St Arnaud, a farming town to the northwest of Melbourne, and it's a central target for Chris Bowen, Daniel Andrews, and the Australian Energy Market Operator for the erection of these massive transmission towers. How have locals reacted to the news that the government plans to commandeer their properties to install these huge transmission towers? And how are people's emotions going here? Are they running high? Oh, well, Amanda, there's red-hot anger uh, out here. We're just outside of St Anud at uh, Manu on a farm here. And uh, we've been meeting with locals uh, just over the last uh, few hours and into the day. And there's huge concerns here. Firstly, that there's been completely inadequate consultation, uh, that they're being steamrolled by inner city politicians and elites as per usual. We've just seen what's happened in Western Australia where there's been a very similar situation. And I can tell you that this is ground zero for the next Western Australian cultural heritage laws. Um, as you know, over in WA, there was no consultation, big community pushback. Uh, and this is not just an issue for those in regional Victoria. This is an issue of monumental national significance. Uh, firstly, this is where food is produced. Uh, it puts food on our table, exported around the world, earning critical revenue that benefits everyone, including those in the inner cities. Uh, secondly, these transmission lines and uh, the solar panels and wind turbines are causing potentially massive destabilisation to the entire national energy grid. If Victoria goes down, it is going to bring the rest of the country down with it. And I can tell you right here in farming communities like where we are, this is absolutely ground zero uh, for uh, the steamrolling of, of those in regional Australia by the inner city elites and politicians. Those national implications are absolutely spot on. Tell us about the easement zones around the transmission towers and lines and what their management means for the ability of locals to deal with weeds and vermin and fire risks. Look, Amanda, you make a really important point. At a meeting earlier today, we met with a CFA official and the information that he provided us was shocking and concerning. Um, it is clear based on that information that people will die as a result of this because they cannot adequately control and manage bushfire risk when you have this massive steel apparatus being set up uh, across the countryside. Um, they have been telling this and feeding this back into our political leaders and those making these decisions, and they're simply not listening. And the community is absolutely beside themselves. Um, I was talking to a mother who has two young kids before. Uh, she was in tears because they were having to uproot their family. They've been here for a multi-generation on the farm, on the land. They're having to leave this place uh, because they don't have the resources to put up their fight, and they're moving to another area. And she was beside themselves and she was asking why are they doing this why are they doing this to those in the regional parts uh, of this country so there are massive costs i mean not just the economic and social costs but the human cost is dramatic and it's time for the political leaders to pay attention to what is going on out here and all for a few green votes in the inner city it sounds like local consultation has been pretty lousy what opportunities do you think will exist in the near future for these individuals and families to be able to have their concerns about their property rights and their future heard by the people who are making these decisions? Are the decisions done and dusted or can those concerns still be taken seriously and for there to be some sort of a U-turn that takes into account what people are concerned about? Well, I can tell you no one in Canberra or Spring Street seems to care. Uh, at least in terms of the government benches. So it's going to be a community leadership that's required. We've had some important political leadership by those such as Bev MacArthur uh, here at the state level that is leading this in the political arena. Mm. And she's doing a, an absolutely tremendous job. And just like Tony Seabrook did in, in Western Australia. So you need a political standard bearer to take up the fight uh, on Spring Street and in Canberra. But I can tell you this, this is a grassroots movement. There is very much a revolt 
that's taking place here in regional Victoria in the Western Districts. And I can tell you, everyone is very united uh, at the problems here, whether it's the transmission lines, blakening the countryside with wind and solar panels, uh, which, as you know, is not only an issue here, but it's a national security issue as well, because we're getting rid of our own sovereign energy yeah. sources, getting rid of our baseload power, uh, and we're surrendering that to overseas suppliers of these ingredients and these these goods, and they can turn it off at the flick of a switch. Uh, there is This makes no sense in any way, shape or form. Massive national ramifications. And as I say, this right here is ground zero and it's where the pushback begins. There's a real question here too. I mean, security of critical infrastructure is vital. If this sort of technology isn't encompassed by the legislative framework we have in place at present, well, there's real questions to be asked about why not. I've got some figures around a slightly different issue here. In 2022, we've got some figures showing the Mount Emerald Wind Farm in far north Queensland, beautiful part of the world, produced literally no power for 63 days of the year. In fact, for almost six months of the year, the wind farm produced 17% of its nameplate capacity or less. Now, this is a wind farm in an elevated position in a high wind area. But, Daniel, with stats like these, how can we possibly build Australia's energy security on unreliable sources like wind? Oh, Amanda, you're spot on. You raise such an important issue. Look, wind and solar can play a role in topping off an energy system, but on a mass scale, they are experimental and they are untested. This has not been done in a country like Australia, anywhere around the world. And you cannot simply power an advanced 21st century economy like Australia's with any meaningful manufacturing or industrial base on uh, intermittent, unreliable wind and solar energy. You've got to have your baseload power supplies. It makes no sense to be completely rewiring the nation, an 80 or $90 billion cost at all this community hardship. Why can't we just extend the life of coal stations, make sure we're getting more gas into the grid, have a look at nuclear? The problem is not our energy system. The problem is short-sighted politicians are pursuing uh, these ineffective, enormously costly renewable energy goals without consulting the community, without any idea of how it's going to be achieved and without even explaining to the Australian people how we're going to be able to maintain our lifestyle and to be the country that we are today, uh, when, as you quote those figures, it, it just can't happen and our political leaders uh, need to front up to the Australian people about this reality. Yeah, it's just irresponsible and cowardly. Daniel Wilde, thank you very much for your time tonight. I know you're very busy on that um, tour of regional Victoria. Keep up the good work.